okay so yesterday we were talking about different types of operators and different operations that we can perform right so we started with mathematical arithmetic in arithmetic we discussed about plus minus into division double division right double division is integer division then double star for power and then modulo okay for remainder then we went ahead and did the comparison operator right comparison operator and here we discussed about greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to equal to and not equal to right so if you want to ask a question is this equal to we use double equal to and if you want to assign a value then we use single equal to right okay so then uh, the next one is logical these three are important okay so logical operators they talks about the logic okay now to understand logic okay uh, most of you are from engineering background so you would know what uh, discrete mathematics have you done it discrete mathematics no okay so you have things like and or not right so if i ask you okay my prediction my prediction is sachin huh nor we don't do uh, you know not okay it's not sachin or sehwag will open the batting okay so this is my prediction actual what happened sachin and rahul opened the batting so tell me is my prediction correct or wrong Huh? Wrong? Prediction is wrong? Okay. Now, second prediction I make. Sachin or Sachin and Sora will open the batting. So, prediction two. So, both prediction is wrong? Yes, guys on phone online. What do you think? Is the prediction correct or wrong? I don't hear you. Everybody on mute. Okay, so the answer is okay. Somebody's on. P one is correct. Yes. Prediction one is right. Okay, see, I'm saying Sachin or Saurav or Sehwag. I'm not taking responsibility for both. I'm saying either one of them. So I tell you, we will do this or this topic, and I do only one topic. Okay, so I met my commitment. See, so there's a difference between or and and. And means both. If I say we will do this and this, both the topic will do. That means if I do one, I have not met my commitment. I have to do both. But if I tell you, we'll do either this or that. So even if I do other thing also, if Sehwag is also opening, it's correct. Okay. If if I do both also, it's fine. Right. But either is also fine. So when you talk about or, only one condition has to be true. Okay. Other need not be true. Even then, answer will be true. So what happens when you have, of course, you know, uh, for this case, for logical, okay, your input values are Boolean input and output both values are boolean okay so for example i say print okay sachin or sehwag and sachin and rahul open that means first condition became true okay and second condition became false right sachin is true sehwag is false correct so now when i say or and when i run it So you see, you get true only. Okay? Because if one of these is true, it will be true. And if I say and here, 
okay it is false because and is expecting both to be true so see if both are true it is true in both and and not if both are false it is false if both are true it is true if both are false it is false but question comes difference between or and, and is if one of them is true and other is false then what okay so or will give you or gives true okay even if one value is true okay and gives false even if one value is false okay otherwise both true true both false false okay now when i say true and false it can be something like this okay 5 greater than 6 now 5 greater than 6 is it true or false false right and say and 8 less than 10 8 less than 10 true or false true so see here so i am using and operator but before and operator you have to evaluate this comparison operator so how this works is okay if i run this program this line of code it will first evaluate the comparison operator so there is a uh, a rule okay which one should be done first then what then what you would have done board mass in mathematics right bracket then off then multiplication division then multiplication then addition then subtraction right so here also there are rules for all of these so when you have and and or okay so in your mind think of and as multiplication and think of or as addition so if i say true or false it is one plus zero right true is one false is zero one plus zero is true correct one true true and false one into zero zero so think of and as multiplication so when you have and and or which should be done first when you have in a statement if you have both and and or then which one should be done first huh ha huh. you have both let's say in one statement then which will be done first see you have plus minus into division everything in one ha huh, of course and will be done first right so see tell me 3 plus 4 into 4 what will this give us 11 huh you are not able to see it is it to come close another oh uh, okay then you sit there okay probably uh i have purposely put a little bigger no you're not able to see no sit next to him no ah okay so tell me what is the answer guys question is for everyone why you guys are on online so this thing you can watch his screen or you can then then your neck will be straight that's why if you sit there Ha, huh. yeah. So what will this answer? What will this give you? Nineteen. Why nineteen? Three plus four is seven into four is twenty-eight. Correct. My first multiplication, right? So if I ask you first, true or false, which one will come first? No, no, I'm asking if you have and and or both. First and will come because and is multiplication, right? That's what I told you. Think of and as multiplication. Okay. So and will come first and then or will come first. Okay. So in this case, we don't have or, we have only and. So you have greater than and less than. Okay. So, uh, okay. So first this comparison operator will be performed and then your logical operator. 
So this will evaluate as 5 greater than 6 as false and 8 less than 10, true. So false and true, what do you think the answer would be? False. So see, you get false here, right? Okay. Now let's solve this example. Val 1, comma, val 2, comma, val 3 equal to 10, comma, 15, comma, 10. Okay. And I'm going to say print val 1 and val 2 or val 3 and okay i'm just putting i have to put a few more stuff okay so just hold on this is not the final question val 1 and val 2 or val 3 okay or val 3 or val 2 and val 1 okay now what i'll do here is val 1 greater than val 2 okay val 2 equal to val 3 val 3 equal to val 1 val 1 not equal to val 3 val 2 greater than equal to val 3 okay let's let's delete all this okay let's not make it too long val 3 not equal to val 1 okay now what do you think this answer would be okay what do you think this will give us output as let's solve step by step first comparison operator isn't it val 1 greater than val 2 true or false 10 greater than 15 false, false. right yes then you have and then val 2 equal to val 3 False. 15 yes false then you have or val 3 equal to val 1 true true and val 3 not equal to val 1 false and val 2 greater than equal to val 3 true okay then or Val 1 not equal to val, th val 3 not equal to val 1. False. Right? Okay. So this is after evaluating comparison operator. Now between AND and OR, we have to do AND first, multiplication first. So F and F. False. Then this is next AND. T and F. Then this is next AND. F and T. Okay, so then now you have false or false, false or false. So this total answer, line number 13, should return false. Okay, so this is your. Uh, um, sir, can you repeat yes. this line, line number 14? Line number 14, okay. Uh, uh, after you uh, just mentioned that. Uh... Uh, false and false or true and false and true or false. After that, what you have done, I just don't wait. Control Z, I did, I did one extra. So you, you solve Ankit one by one. Okay. You solve one by one. What do you notice? Uh, sir, after finding uh, this, uh, this uh, first value is false. The, that uh, value 1 is uh, greater than value 2. See, okay, I'll tell you. 
see first when you have logical and comparison both which one do you solve first and of you solve uh, comparison first so you solve all these right so you get f and leave this as it is so, and whatever true i'm just writing okay or okay okay you solve this way once you have removed the comparison operator now you have both logical operators and and or when you have both logical operators and and or we need to solve and first to so solve all ands and 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 once you're done with and see it's like this if you have 3 plus 5 into 2 minus 6 into 3 plus 5 minus 3 into 4 divided by 3 okay so what do you do if i have to solve like this how do you solve it I, I just apply both rules to solve. So first, what you will do is first you will solve multiplication and division. Both take same priority, right? So yes. both take same priority. So plus you will leave it as it is. Okay. So three plus five into two ten. Okay. So this is solved as ten. Then minus. Then you have multiplication six into three eighteen. Okay, plus 5, minus, now minus, okay, generally you do division here, but what happens if you do division here, it becomes, uh, I mean, yeah, so uh, it becomes in decimal format. So what you do, okay, you will multiply here 3 into 4, because division and uh, multiplication take same priority, they're same. So I'll do 3 into 4, 12, divided by 3, 4. So you get this. Next step is now you perform addition and subtraction. Both take same. So 10 plus 3, 13. Okay. Now 50, 5 minus 4, 1. Okay. Now here 18 plus 1, 19. 13 minus 19, minus 6. So this is what you will, this is how you evaluate. So if you solve this you should get minus 6.0 okay why because we are using division so it will convert into float it is minus 4 is it it says minus 4 how 3 okay let's do it again 3 plus 5 into 10 5 into 2 10 correct minus 6 into 3, 18, plus 5, minus 12 by 3 is 4. So now 5 minus 4, 1. 18 plus, oh, minus 18 plus 1 is 17, right? Not 19. This is minus 18. You guys forgot mathematics. 18 minus 18 plus 1 is minus 17, not 19. And this is 13, right? So 13 minus 17 is minus 4. That's how you got minus 4. So this is how you solve this line out 13 also. Yes, Ankit? Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Then you have one more, something called as membership function. We'll do it when we talk about mangoes. Mango fell down. Uh -huh. So a membership function we'll do when we uh, do uh, strings and uh, you know lists and tuple. We'll talk about this. Okay. So you have in, not in. Okay. Uh, those functions, those operators, basically. Okay. So with that we complete. Okay. There is one more thing. Let's do it. Okay. It is called bitwise operator. Bitwise operator works on bits. Okay. And this also has and or not. Okay. This is logical, but it works on binary numbers, not on decimal numbers. Okay. We write not as this mark. Okay. Or as 
प्लस ओके और एज पाइप साइन ओके एंड एंड एज एम परसेंट ओके सो दे वर्क एट they work at bit wise you know at bits so if i perform here if i say print 50 and 30 if i say 50 and 30 you see ampersand sign it will perform at bit wise so what it does is it converts 50 and 30 into binary and then performs and operation so what i will do for now i'll just comment it out okay and here you say print bin of 50 and i'll say bin of 30 so now when you run this 50 and 30 you get 110010 right so let me start a paint one second guys so वन वन जीरो जीरो वन जीरो वन वन जीरो जीरो वन जीरो करेक्ट देन यू हैव एम परसेंट एंड यू हैव डबल वन डबल डबल वन डबल वन नो डबल वन डबल वन जीरो करेक्ट सो जीरो डबल वन डबल वन right number generally we put zero on the left side and you perform and operation when you perform and what do you notice zero and zero one and one one and one one binary zero and one zero and one one and one one and zero right so you get 110 right so if i go back here now i'm going to say print integer of 0 b that is how you indicate binary okay 100 right so 10010 10. so when you run this what do you get 18 that means if you do 50 and 30 you get 18 as the answer okay similarly if i do or 50 okay pipe sign or if i do 50 or 30 okay generally and a nor we use okay 50 or 30 not is on one variable not false is true not true is false not zero is one not uh, not one is zero so 50 or 30 okay so we'll go back here and we are performing pipe that is or Zero or zero, one or one, one. One plus one, one. Zero plus one, zero or one, 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 one. So you get triple one, double one, zero. So if I say here, integer of zero b. Triple one, double one, zero, right? So your last two answers should be same, sixty-two. So if you perform fifty or thirty, you get bitwise, okay, bitwise, and an or, you get sixty-two, which is uh, so we have two more operation here, which is which are very useful. They are called left shift and right shift, okay. So and or, and then you have. left shift and right shift so you are shifting the values on the left or on the right okay let's go back here now if i give you a number 1 1 1 and i tell you shift to the left shift to the left now if i give you number 512 okay forget about binary integer number 512 If I tell you shift towards left, what will you do? So you are shifting five. This is hundreds place. So five will go to thousands place. One will go to hundreds place. Two will go to tens place. 
So what do you have? You have 5, 1, 2, and 1 place has to be something, right? Nothing is there, so it will be 0. So if I tell you, do, you do 1 left shift of 512, you get 5120. Okay? Now same 512, and if I tell you to do right shift, okay, that means you are moving to the right. This is 1's place. If you move to the right, what will happen? Decimal value, right? So you are losing the value. Okay, you have three digit five one two. I'm telling you, move to the right. That means you will lose two. So what you will end up getting is one, right? This goes away. One will go to the ten, uh, ones place, and five will go to the tens place. So you'll get fifty one, right? You will get fifty one. So when you are doing right shift, you are losing value. When you are doing left shift, you are gaining value. By how much? When you do left shift, you are gaining the value. By how much? 10 times. Okay. 500 becomes 5,000. 10 times. And when you are losing value, when you go right, by how much are you losing? 10 times you are losing. By 10, right? 500 became 50. Right? So you are losing value by 10 times. Okay. Now coming to the left shift and right shift, it works on? Bitwise works on bits, okay? Works on binary values. Each of these single value is called bits. That's why you have bit, 8 bits become byte. Then you have kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, GB, TB, we say. That means you can multiply, okay? So many single character it can store, okay? So now if I say 1, 1, 1, 1. So what is the value of this in, uh, in uh, integer? You don't have to go, you can directly calculate. This is 2, right? No, this is 1. 1, 2, 4, 8. So you have 8 plus 4, 12, plus 15, right? 4 plus 3, 15. Okay? So now if I say left shift, that means I'm moving to the left side. So we will have one value on the right here now what happens this is your one one two four eight sixteen now if you add them together 24 plus 4 28 plus 2 30 what do you get 30 now you see when you're doing left shift your value is getting what double see when you are doing decimal value when Okay, in decimal, you have number system 10. So when you move to the left, it's getting multiplied by 10. When you're dealing with binary numbers, when you move to the left, it gets double, right? Binary 2, so twice. Decimal 10, so, you know, if you have done octal, octal number system, if you move to the left, it will get multiplied by 8. Hexadecimal, if you move to the left, it will get multiplied by 16. Okay, similarly, if I... You know, so four ones. Now, if I do right shift, that means I will lose this one, right? I'll have only three ones. So one, two, four. It is seven. So see, 15 by two is what? Seven. We're ignoring decimal. Here also we ignore decimal. So 15 by two is seven only, right? So when you do right shift, you are getting half, right? Okay. So let's go back to our program now. So what I'm doing, I'm going to say print 312, okay, Great, double greater than is right shift. And I say 3, 312, right shift 3. That means I'm saying 312 become, go, th uh, go 3 times to the right. So when you go 1 time, 312 becomes what? Right shift. This is bitwise, not decimal. I told you these are all bitwise operators. It works on bitwise. Okay, e. It works on bit. So three twelve will become half. So one fifty six, right? So one time if you do one fifty six, two times if you do 
150 by 156 by 2. It is 150 is 75 plus 3, 78. And again, one more, three times. So, 78 by 2 is 39, correct? So, when you run it, see you get 39. So, this is how you can do half and half and half. Okay. So, no, see, see the direction. Arrow, which side? See, the, look at the arrow. Arrow is going in which direction? Left side or right side? Right side, right shift. Yes, less than. Okay. So, now if I do, okay, print 12, left shift 3. So, 12 becomes 24, 24 becomes 48, 48, and 48 becomes 96. Three times, right? So, you are multiplying by 2, 3 times. So, you get 96. So, sometimes these are useful, okay? I have, never, I have not found these as useful, but yes, these are useful. Sometimes, you know, depending upon. So, this is used to half, to do the half because bitwise, okay? So, with that, we finish our operators, okay? That's all in operators, nothing more. Okay? Now, we will move to the next important topic, okay? This is like your, like yesterday I said, right? Point one. Now we have uh, reached level one. Whatever we have done here is level one program. Okay. Um, I want to give some assignment. Okay. Maybe what I'll do, I'll after the class I'll give. Okay, uh, I will share the link after the class. I'll share a link and then I upload the assignment is also in the hard disk. Okay, so I'll give you assignment here. So uh, I'll say refer the uh, document for assignment. Okay, now those assignments are little tricky. Okay. Easy, but tricky. Okay, I want you to try. There will, I'll give you three assignments. First two will be easy. Third one will be little tricky. Okay, so try those. Okay, now we are going to level two of programming. Level two of programming is called conditions. So see here. So far, we are doing what is called a sequential programming. Okay, we are going line by line. How many lines of program we have written? 24 lines of program. So if I run, it will execute in same order, right? It will get in same order. Now let's say there's some situation where you do not want, you know, uh, sequential programming. For example, okay, you want to uh, see, let's say student, you want to check if, you know, if a student has passed the exam or not, right? So result will be pass or fail you will not have both pass and fail so if you want to check the result and based on the marks let's say you want to give the result so result will be both okay the program should have both print pass and it should have both print fail because some student will fail some student will pass so your program should have both pass and fail uh, uh, values but for a given student, only one of these will be called, not both, right? Either pass or fail, right? So if I say pass and fail, if I run it, obviously both will be printed, right? But I want only one of these to be printed. So I will put some condition saying that if condition is, if average is more than 35, print pass. Otherwise, print fail, right? So that is what we call as conditions in programming language. Okay. In uh, Python, you have if, elif, and else. And we'll see one by one. So let's say if average is 50. Okay. 
average is 50. Okay, average is 50. Now, 50 means what? Student will pass, correct? So, this is how you write. If AVG greater than equal to 35, where 35 is passing mark, print, pass. Okay, now you see a few things here. Careful. Average equal to 50, easy, okay? I'm signed. Now, I'm checking the value of average. Is it greater than or equal to 35? So you have if followed by your conditional statement. And this will result either true or false. So if works on Boolean values only. Okay. So if followed by Boolean value. If it is yes, then you go inside if. How does Python know what is inside if? Indentation. So, so far what we've been saying is indentation is important do not give even one single space but now we are learning where to give space before print see before print we have spaces so we are learning now where and when to give spaces see if i put if, if i put print in the main line okay if i don't give indentation then print becomes part of your sequential execution but what i'm saying now is if average if true, then you go inside if. Python will say, how do I know what is inside if? Say, okay, I'll give you one single space. For Python, even one space is okay. Okay? It doesn't have to be given. So, even if you give one space, Python says, okay, one space. So, this is how you do, right? Formatting. When you are doing uh, your bullet and things like that, right? Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. This is not what I wanted to type. Okay. So let's say I have written. What I do first, I will put bullet points. Okay. Or let's say, let's say this is main header and these two are subheaders what i'll do i'll put this so what happened these five lines got inside this what what does it mean it means these five are part of subtype of this main one isn't it similarly if i do this here it means these three lines are part of this if i do this it means this is part of this now, let's say if you want to make this one as part of first one. So, what I'll do, I'll put a tab here. What does this mean? It means this is part of this and this is part of this. So, you are go going to the right, right? You're giving space here. That's what it means, isn't it? This is main header, this is subheader, and this is sub subheader. Same thing we are doing in Python here. This is main line. And I'm saying space here. That means this is inside your main line. Right? So you can give one space or you can give 100 space. Doesn't matter to the Python. Right? Here, same thing in bullet, right? Whether I start from here or, you know, I'll select margin, right? Um, so if I say view and if I say margin, where do you see margin? Ruler, right? Let's see if I put ruler. Right. I can drag this here also. Okay. I can drag this one here also. Right. It doesn't matter. What matters is, you know, how, it doesn't matter how much space you give. What matters is that flow. Right. Main, sub, sub, sub. Right. So, same thing here. It doesn't matter how much space you give. You give one space or hundred space, doesn't matter. Okay. It shows this print is inside if. It will be part of main. So, it will not be part of if. It will execute. No. Uh -huh. It will execute as if this is part of your main. Okay. It should print pass. But in this case, what happens? Okay. In this case, what happens? When you write if, when you write if, elif, else, 
it expects at least one value inside if. If I have a door, right, you expect it to go inside, right? Then why, why do you put door if you do not have even one? So, so logically, it should have printed pass, okay? But since you have written if, Python is expecting at least one line inside if, okay? At least one line. But let's say you do not have, okay? Generally, when you write multiple conditions, right? We don't have to write all the conditions at the same time. We'll Okay? So, let's say you write if, but you do not have anything to put it inside. So, for dummy if, you can use what is called as pass. Simple PASS, it's, it is to tell to the Python that I have written if, but there is nothing to put inside if. So, now when you run it, your print pass will be printed. Irrespective, even if you get 5 also, your pass is printed. Because this pass is part of main program, not part of your condition. Pass is part of your, print pass is part of your main program, right? Now, <clears throat> pass is there only if you want to put a dummy thing. Because if you have a if, you have to have something inside if. Otherwise, where do you put if? So Python will throw error. So if you do not have, let's say you want to come back and let add later tomorrow or maybe next month or let's say people are still discussing what should we do. So when discussion is over, you want to add it. So for now you put pass and when you are ready to add, then you come back and add it. Okay. So it's, it's, you put pass. Okay. Otherwise, okay. You put pass here. Now what we say generally is to put a tab space. Okay. Because one single space, if you put, Sometimes it doesn't, uh, I will not catch it. So you may not know whether it's part of main or inside if. So it is better to give some spaces. How much spaces? Tab. Okay, if you give 100 spaces, also it doesn't look good. So generally, general practice is to give tab space. But for Python, even one single space is enough. It knows that it is inside. So when you put, when you have multiple lines of text to add, print. Congratulations on, on great result, let's say. Now, this print, congratulations, also I want to put it inside if. Correct? This also I want to print, put inside if. So, when you also want to put this inside if, for first line I said you have a choice. You give one space or tab space or 100 spaces. But... From second line onwards, you do not have any choice. You have to follow same number of spaces. <clears throat> if you give 100, here also you have to give 100. If you have third line, here also you have to give 100. Okay, you have one more line, here also you have to give 100. You have no choice. First line you have a choice. But second line onwards, you have no choice. Otherwise, it will become like sub part, right? It's like you know, so so when I go back to what document, for this one you have a choice. For this one you have a choice. But for this one you have no choice, okay? You have to push this one also till here, right? Okay? Now, this is inside this one. So, it need not be exactly below that. This one you can put it here, no problem. This need not be below this. Because this is part of this one. <clears throat> this or this is part of the second bullet point. So, okay, you can put this here as well. But once, wherever you put this one, exactly below this only you have to put this. Right? Otherwise, people get confused what you want to do. Okay? So, same thing goes here in Python programming. First line you have a choice, but second line onwards you do not have a choice. Now, when I run this, what happens, you see? None of these are printed. Why? It's false. This returned false. Right? So, if this returned false, if this is false, it will not go inside. If this is true only, it will go inside. So, if I say 50, now you see, it is true and you say pass, congratulations, and two blank lines. Two blank print, right? So, you got two blank line as well. So, these will be printed only if this condition is true. If the condition is false, it will not go inside. Okay, this is your if. Now, you can write one more if. Let's say if it is more than 90. 
Okay. So I'll say oh, super duper result, right? So I'll say if AVG greater than equal to 90, print super duper result, let's say, for example. Obviously, in this case, okay, this is 50. This is not same as, I mean, it's not 90. Okay, so this is false. This is true. You get this. This is false. You don't get this. So every, whenever you see if, it is beginning of a new condition. Whenever you see if, it is beginning of a new condition. It's like new houses. Okay, so you have one house. When you see another house number, that means it's another house. When you see another house number, that means another house. Okay, so I can have multiple if. Now, let's say here I want to pass, if I want to print both pass and fail. So Python gives you capability to add here else. So if can exist independently, if does not, does not need to have else or anything else. But when you have to check two conditions, I want to check for pass and also fail. So you have else, else will never have condition. Else is like otherwise. If this is true, then else will not get executed. If this is false, then only else will get executed. It's like otherwise. Okay, so here I'll say print. Okay, and now here I just said, right, I can give it any any spaces. Need not be exactly below print. Here I can say fail. So in this case, if you see, if you run it, okay, it is pass. So you get pass, congratulations. If I make it as five, okay, now you see, Okay, after this fail, this does not get executed because this condition is false. If this is false, else will automatically execute and you see fail. Okay. Clear everyone? So you have if, you can have else. Else means if if is false, else will get executed. Okay. Then you also have something called as elif. See, if you have only one condition to check, if is enough. If you have two conditions to check, this or otherwise that, you use if else. If you have multiple conditions to check, multiple conditions means, let's say I want to assign grade right if average is more than 90 then super duper result okay and then if average is less than 80 now you see here when you talk about if and else only one block will get executed either if block will get executed or else block will get executed no way both the blocks will get executed okay but if you write new if that's the beginning of new condition so same logic applies for new so this if and this if, they are unrelated. They are not at all related. Whenever you see if, that's the indication. When you see if, that means it's a beginning of new set of condition. Okay? So else will belong to the whatever previous if you have written. If you have multiple conditions to check. Now let's say I want to check. Okay? If average is greater than 90, you want to assign A plus grade. If it is 80, assign A, A grade. If it is 70, you want to assign B. If it is 60, you need to assign C. If it is 50, you assign D. Okay, if it is more than 40, okay, D. And uh, f more than 40, you assign, let's say, We'll say B plus, B minus, B plus, B minus. Here you say C. Here you say uh, uh, 35 we'll put. Okay. More than 35, but less than 50. More than 35, but less than 50, you say D grade. Okay. And less than 35, it is E grade, let's say. Okay. So let's see this. 
So if average is more than or equal to 90, okay, you say A plus. Okay. Now you have else if. Elif is a short form for else if. That means elif means what? Else, that is, if first one is false, then check for new condition. L if. If elif will also have a condition. A V G greater than equal to A T print. Great. A. A minus, right? Now, this is what I was saying. So, you may not have all the logic built in. So, what we do is, first we write the structure. If AVG greater than equal to 70, pass. Elif AVG greater than equal to 60, pass. Elif AVG greater than equal to 50, pass. Elif AVG greater than equal to 35. Pass. Elif AVG. Okay. Now you see 35 and then less than 35. That's the else condition. So we don't we do not need to write elif here. You can directly say else. Right? Else pass. Okay. So what we have done, we have created this basic logic, you know how to write, how to handle this. Now see here, if you get 90, this condition is true. Yes, this condition is true. So you'll get this as result, correct? Now this condition is also true, right? If your average is 90, okay, let me assign here, average equal to 90. So if I say 90, this condition is true. So you should print super duper result. This is also true, isn't it? Should we should print grade A minus also? Let's run it and see. It printed only super duper result. It did not print grade A minus. Why? Because I told you in a if block, okay, this entire thing is if block. Okay. Only one condition will be executed. The first one to match will execute and throw you out. Okay. If you come to meet me, if I meet you at the door itself, you'll talk to me at the door and go away, right? You will not come inside. When I'm not at the door, you will come inside and talk to me. If I'm not here also, then you'll come here and talk to me, right? So you keep checking till you meet your requirements. Once you're done, you will go back. You don't have to go forward and check, okay? So remember, in that's why we write. Otherwise, you could have written if, 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 right? If average more than 90, if average more than 80, if average more than 70, we can, we could have written multiple if only. No, we write if, elif, else because in if, elif, else, only one condition has to be true. Okay? So, whichever is the first condition true will execute and go out. So, if I give 90, it prints this and directly goes here to line number 55. It will not even check this. It will not even check. It will directly go to line number 55. Okay. So now let's go and let's, you know, print this. So grade here we said B plus. So we'll say B plus. Here we said B minus. So we'll say B minus. Here we said C. So we'll say C. Here we say D, so we'll go and say D. You know, you complete it. That's how you write pass and later, you know, one by one you complete. Here, here see, we have only one line. Easy. But in actual programming, you'll have multiple lines. You have to think. <clears throat> so you cannot think parallelly all 10 things or 7 things, right? First, you create the structure. Then one by one, you think and start putting it. Okay? So if you get... 52 or even 50, 54 what C grade, right? So you will get grade C. Okay, so this is how we write. <clears throat> this is advanced, like next level. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far on this?
yes 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 yeah, yeah. first we calculate for one no then we'll see for first you learn to calculate for one then we will learn to calculate for 100 right so we have something called as loops loop is repeating the same thing <clears throat> that will be our next topic once we do this we'll practice okay still tomorrow also we need to practice this <clears throat> So once we practice this, then we'll go to loops. Loops, we'll see how you can run same thing multiple times. So if I need to do it for 100 students, I need to run this for multiple times, right? Same thing if I have 10 students, I have to run it 10 times. 100 students, I have to run it 100 times. So whole whole logic, I'll put it in a loop. So it will take me 10, 100 times. Okay? Okay. So before we end today's session, I want to talk about one more con uh, one more concept, concept of input. See, so far we are giving values directly, average equal to fifty, right? Directly average equal to fifty. Now, this is called hard coding. You are hard coding the value. If I run it hundred times, also it will take fifty only, right? But I want it to be changing. I want the user to give the value. I told you this is bottom area is the user's area. Correct? This is what the user will see. I want to get the user input, we say. Okay? I want to get the user input. Input from the user. Okay? So, user will give input here. So, I, so I need to read the value from here. And based on that, I want to perform all this work. So, for that purpose, we use this function called as input. Okay, so input is a function to take input value from the user. Okay, okay, so input. Now, input can have it is just input blank, or at max, it can have one text. Unlike your print, can have any number of values here, but input will take only one parameter, only one value. So you can leave it blank. Okay, now see when you run the program, you get exit code. Exit code zero means your program has run successful. Yesterday we got exit code one. Program had error when we wanted to give error. Now when you run this program, see what happens. It has printed grade C, and do you see here any um, any exit code? No. Why? Because program is still running. Program has not finished. It is still running. So you have this input. Input means to take the value from the user, okay? Take, takes value from the user. So it is waiting for us to give a value. Okay, if I give five and hit enter, now it stopped. Okay, so input will take a value. Now, if you want to see what value we have given, so we'll say <coughs> value equal to input. And you can print this val value. Okay. So now when you run it, you see it is waiting for us to enter value. I say hello. And I hit enter. You see, value became hello and it printed hello here. You want to know the data type of this? So print data, sorry, type. Type of val. You run it. Okay, I give 100 here. Right? Okay, 100 is integer, you know, I know. How will Python know that 100 is integer? 100 you can give as a string also, correct? Yesterday we saw, remember? Yesterday, example, I gave value 1 equal to 5. When we were talking about explicit and implicit conversion. In this case, 5 is, five is what? String. 100 is string. So how will Python know that you want to enter string 100 or integer 100? Okay. So by default, okay, by default, input takes in value as okay whatever you give you give 5 5.5 because see python doesn't know what you want to enter 
and string is a text or a string is some uh, you know is a data type which can read all kinds of value whether you give false or true it will read true also it will read in integer complex float also it will read and string will read string also but not it is not true with integer or float okay so if you want to it if you want to enter hello then integer will fail because yesterday i saw right when we converted text into int it gave error right so you cannot take text as integer but you can take integer as text okay so that's why what does python says this python says since i don't know what you want to enter i will read it as text now if you want it as integer you do explicit conversion just like what we did yesterday okay so if you want to convert this value into integer you will say value equal to int of value okay or you can put it in the same line read and then convert i told you we can have multiple functions so first what am i doing first inner function will be called and then the outer function so inner function is input once you read the value that value is then converted into integer so now when i run and i say 100 you hit enter you see it is integer so you have to perform explicit conversion okay now see here when you run it okay as a user you get confused what should i enter right when you are booking a tra train ticket or railway or flight ticket it shows enter the origin enter the destination enter your name so then we know okay i need to enter my name here if it just said enter you don't know what to enter isn't it so you can give a text message just one text message enter a number so it's a text quotation so whatever you give same thing it will display here okay so it is waiting for me to enter a value okay now you run it and see 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 this is enter a number now as a user you know oh i need to enter a number here so you will say 100 and see it is 100 and it is integer error okay so enter a number and you say hello okay say mirror that we got yesterday right so you will get error here so what we do is okay we take input convert into integer and we'll see okay how to handle errors towards the end of our discussion python discussion okay so this is one way of doing it the same thing what i'll do here instead of average equal to 50 what i'll do i will say int of input enter the average value of the student or rather than integer i'll convert into float now when you run it see it says enter the average of the student 55 grade c okay run again 15 okay so why 15 is not shown let me say 15 oh see we have not written the text here so far for fail right so what i'll do is we'll go and write here print grade e now you run it average 15 says grade e right so this is how you can perform this before we end i want to give you an assignment okay this one should be easy take marks of five subjects from the user the moment i said from the user it means you have to use input so you are saying enter marks 1 enter marks 2 enter marks 3 enter marks 4 enter marks 5 you have to write five input to get five marks okay take marks of five subjects from a user and calculate sum and average and then assign the grade 
based on above discussion. So take marks of five subjects from the user, calculate sum and average, and then assign the grade based on above discussion. The same. So you have to copy and paste. But before that, you have to perform certain activities. Okay. I want you to do this program today and okay, look for more assignment in the link which I'm going to share you immediately. Okay. Within half an hour, I'll share.